Hello everyone, welcome back to the Gun Lake Paddle Sports Micro Light Trailers YouTube channel. Today I'm going to do a more extended test on the Planar 2D portable diesel heater. I'm going to run it for most of the day and see how much fuel it consumes and try to measure how much discharge it will uh, take from a fully charged 12 volt deep cycle battery. The last test, I ran the heater to empty and I made a little mark here on the bottom how much fuel is left in when the unit shuts itself off as its low fuel warning system dictates. So I left that much fuel in and I added two gallons. The markings on this tank uh, are not from the US so I couldn't make out just how big the capacity of the tank is putting in these two gallons as you can see leaves a little bit near the top so I'm thinking it's maybe a two and a half gallon tank if you went to all the way empty past the little mark on the bottom but that's pretty close and enough to do a good test here is the deep cycle battery that I'm going to be using it's not brand new I've run a handful of cycles through it already it's a parts plus marine deep cycle battery and I'm guessing from the markings on the top it's a 500 series battery I think it's going to focus try to get that better I'm going to connect this digital multimeter to the battery so that you can see the voltage that we start with Looks like this fully charged battery is going to settle in right about 13.04 volts. So we'll begin our test. Okay, there. we've got it outside and hooked up and running. It started just as advertised by using the little remote. And I've got the heat set at approximately half the value right at this moment. I pushed the little button here on the right and the light came on. The last time I used it, in the video that you may have watched, the fuel ran out right at the end of our test, which was, which was good because it helped us with the test. The heater did cycle a couple of times before it uh, fired up this time. It didn't take very long, maybe one or two minutes at the most, but it's up and running. So the next thing I'm going to do is bring out a micro light cargo light trailer and uh, I've had one built with the three inch port in the, in the side of it so that we can run the controller and the heat tube inside the trailer and I'm going to see if I can find a setting that will keep it comfortable inside that trailer uh, today's high is supposed to be 32 uh, lows in the lower 20s so we'll monitor the temperature outside and see what kind of a job it does and how much of that uh, little remote controls setting needs to be turned up to keep it reasonably comfortable inside of the trailer. Okay, Stay here tuned. is the setup. We have the micro light cargo light trailer with a three inch screw out cord in the side that the hose and the temperature control can easily pass through. I've taken a towel just to uh, plug up the rest of the hole that's not taken up by the tube and the wire. One thing that's really nice, the heat tube that comes out of the heater itself does not get warm enough to be a danger to that towel or hands or anything inside the trailer. It just doesn't get hot enough to cause any damage. I put the battery on a uh, piece of board so it's not sitting directly in the snow. I think if I were going to set this up uh, as a regular use item I would probably put the battery in a small tub vented just to keep it out of the weather a little bit and to keep the, uh, the fuse there out of the weather as well even though it's well constructed it looks like it could take a major storm I like to keep things covered if I can today's high was uh, reportedly going to be about 32 we're settling in at about 35 right now fired this heater up at 1240 
It's now 1.30, so it hasn't been running quite an hour. I just got it in the trailer a few minutes ago. But let's take a look inside and see what it looks like. Coming through the port inside, I've still got 10 feet of tube here because I'm going to use multiple applications. So I just wrapped it in a bungee, tucked it against the wall, and uh, let the warm air come out right underneath this shelf here. It should keep things plenty toasty in the trailer. I've dialed the remote down a little bit. I don't think I'm going to need a lot to keep this small trailer warm. Uh, so we'll see how that setting that's more low than high works out. I've covered the floor in here with a couple of rubber mats that I keep around my toolbox and a couple of rugs that I had laying around. So I'm going to close this up now, let the heater do its job, and see how comfortable this cargo light is in maybe an hour or so. Stay Welcome tuned. back. The sun is starting to get low. I had planned to monitor this experiment a little bit closer, but the weather just stayed right at about 35 degrees all afternoon. And it was nice enough where my wife and I decided we would take a little walk in the woods instead. So we're coming back at 4.30, maybe a little past. The experiment's been going on for four hours now. I checked just before we left for our walk and the uh, temperature inside the trailer was climbing past 70 so I turned the thermostat control all the way to low you can tell with the uh, heater that the fuel pump works a little less the exhaust note is just a little quieter and the thermostats now finally starting to to creep down just a little bit Let's see what it's doing inside. We've got it on absolute lowest setting, right down to nothing. And our temperature inside here, almost 70. You almost have to open up a window to be comfortable at the lowest setting. So, looking at the fuel consumption, I think you guys can see certainly hasn't gone down much after four hours everything seems to be doing fine I'll check the battery at the end of the experiment see how many volts it has left in it after nightfall trying to simulate what a night sleeping would be like seven eight hours or so in a trailer of this size So we'll get back at it here in a little bit after a few more hours pass and see where we're at. Welcome back. Here we are six hours into the test. I've made a fire just because it's nice. We'll take a walk over to the camper. It's gotten down to pretty close to 30 degrees outside now that the sun is set. I checked the internal thermostat, thermometer. And it's at 68 degrees inside the camper. A very cozy environment, as you might be able to see through the window. I haven't adjusted the temperature control off of minimal since I did earlier this afternoon. It's doing a fine job in there. So far, I haven't taken a battery voltage, but uh, obviously it's still doing its job. You can hear the little heater running. So with six hours in, pretty happy. And we'll come back out here, maybe in another hour and a half or so to conclude the test. Find out where the battery's at and call it a night. Stay tuned. Here we are after more than seven hours of constant runtime. I am chilling inside the cargo light trailer. 
it's a very comfortable 68 degrees. The heat uh, is dry. I suspect it would go a long ways towards uh, eliminating any condensation. At micro light, the cargo light is the medium of the small trailers. We have one smaller called the Twist and one a little larger called the Cargo Light Plus until we get into our larger extreme models. But the reason that's important is because the Twist and the two smaller Cargo Lights don't have the physical space inside to be able to put a propane system in. So someone who's looking for a boondocking camping experience uh, is pretty much going to have to use a um, electric ceramic heater. They, they work really good, uh, along with a small generator. And there's places that uh, you just can't do a generator all night long. So this diesel heater is something I think will be very helpful for uh, the smaller campers that just don't have a propane system, someone who's not comfortable using a Mr. Buddy. And uh, if I'm really quiet, you can hear ever so slightly the fuel pump noise coming through the tube. It sounds like the hands of a clock. Not at all disturbing. The carbon monoxide detector is right at zero, nothing going on there. And the heat controller remains at the lowest possible setting. I'd probably have to crack the roof vent just a little bit for it to be cool enough to even sleep inside your sleeping bag. But it's nice in here. Really nice. I'm, I'm very happy. Help us see the fuel without having to get my flashlight out. There it is. The fuel level is right here. So with two gallons added from this point down here to where it was approximately up here, after over seven hours of operation, that fuel consumption consumption is just amazing. I can't believe it's putting out all that heat with only that much fuel used. So we'll get it unhooked, put the trailer away, get the battery inside, and see what the battery thinks of all this. Well, that wraps it up. The only thing left to do is to check the voltage on the battery. So let's have a look. The battery's been sitting here about 10 or 15 minutes, giving it a little time to rest after uh, the discharge cycle. We started with 13.4 volts about 7 hours and 15 minutes ago. Can we focus on that. We're still at 12.53 volts. That's more than I expected. I can only imagine what a warmer battery would hold or even a lithium ion phosphate. So keep an eye on the channel. We'll get the lithium ion system set up in the micro light trailers and we'll do this again. Thanks for watching.